Hi, Mr. Wright here, and welcome to this set of IGCSE exam questions, which are about grades six to eight. So these sets of questions are perfect if you're approaching your exams and you want to practice questions on a range of topics, all at a certain level. So hit the link in the description, download the questions, have a go, and then watch my work solutions. If you find this film useful, please hit like. And if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments and I'll respond. Good luck. Question one. Right, I'm going to write an equation to reflect the fact that the area of the path is one tenth of the area of the pond. So the area of the path is the area of the whole circle, which is pi times r plus 1.5 squared minus the area of the pond, which is pi r squared, and that equals a tenth of the area of the pond. So there's an equation in r. Right, I'm going to divide everything by pi, and these are with r plus 1.5 squared, which is of course r plus 1.5 times r plus 1.5, minus pi r squared, uh, sorry, minus r squared, because I'm dividing by pi, and that equals r squared over 10. Let's expand those two brackets. r squared plus 1.5r plus 1.5r is 3r plus 1.5 times 1.5 minus r squared equals r squared over 10. Tidy up the left-hand side. 3r plus 2.25 equals r squared over 10. Multiplying by 10, 30r plus 22.5 equals r squared. Set it equal to 0, r squared minus 30r minus 22.5 equals 0. Multiply everything by 2, 2r squared plus 60r minus 45 equals 0. There you go. Show that that equation is true. Now I'm asked to calculate the area of the pond. Well, of course, I can find r by solving this equation. Then I can use that value of r to find the area of the pond. So let's solve this equation. The equation is 2r squared minus 60r minus 45 equals 0. Now it tells me to give my answer to three significant figures, so there's a clue that I'm going to need to use the formula. r equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over twice a. Now, if you put that in your calculator, you get one negative answer, which is obviously not feasible, and you get a positive answer for R. And now I'm asked to find the area of the pond, remember? So that was pi R squared, so that's pi times 30.732 squared. On my calculator, that works out to be 2967 point so on, but to three significant figures, 2,970 square metres. And that is question one. Done. Okay, correct to two significant figures. A, B, and C have these values. Calculate the upper bound for that. Right, so let's first of all start by writing the upper and lower bounds of A, B, and C. So A, those are the bounds for A, the bounds for B, 27.5 and 28.5, the bounds for C, 17.5 and 18.5. Now we'd like this expression to be as large as possible. So we're going to have the largest possible number on the numerator. And we want the smallest possible number on the denominator. Now, to get the smallest possible number, I want the difference between B and C to be as small as possible. So I'm going to find the lowest B and the highest C. And so that is what I'm going to put in my calculator to get the answer that the upper bound for that expression is 6.5. Two bags contain discs. Bag A has got five red, six blue, and one white. And bag B has got N red and the rest blue. 
Jane takes at random a disc from A, and now Lucy takes one from B. Given that they both take a red disc is 2 fifteenths, find the value of N. Well, let's find an expression for the probability that they both take a red disc. Probability that the first disc, disc is red is 5 twelfths, and the probability that the second disc is red is N out of 25, and you know that that product has to equal 2 fifteenths. Right, well, I can cancel here. Cancel there. So on the left hand side, I get n over 60, and that equals 2 15. So multiply both sides by 60, and that will tell me that n is 8. So before I do anything else, bag B has got 8 red and 17 blue out of its 25 discs. Hence, calculate the probability that James and Lucy take discs of different colors. Colors. Well, there seem to be lots of different ways they can take discs of different colours. So I'm going to find the probability that they take discs of the same colour, which is going to be the probability that they both take a red plus the probability that they both take a blue. Well, the probability that they both take a red, we already know, is 2 fifteenths, and the probability that they both take a blue is the probability that the first of them takes a blue, 6 out of 12, multiplied by the probability that the second of them takes a blue, 17 out of 25. So, a uh, little bit of maths, and I work out that the probability of them both taking the same is 2 fifteenths plus, that's a half, so it's going to be plus 17 over 50. Stick that into my calculator. Seventeen over fifty. So the probability of them both taking the same disc is one hundred and seventy-one. One sorry, is a seventy-one one hundred and fiftieth. So the probability that they take different ones is one minus seventy-one over one fifty, which is seventy-nine out of 150. So there is the solution to question number three. Question four. A, B, C, D is a kite. Measurements are shown. Calculate the area of the kite. Right, well I'm going to split my kite into two triangles. I'm going to find the area of each triangle, remembering that the area of a triangle is given by the formula half A, B sine C. So in this case, the area of the kite, there are two triangles, they're both the same, and I have got 3 times 8 times sine 110. So a little bit of calculator use tells me that the area of the kite is, to three significant figures, 22.6 square centimetres. Okay, I'm going to take the expression for y given to me here and substitute it into the first of the equations. So that's going to give me x squared plus 10 minus 2x squared equals 20. So now I simply need to solve this quadratic equation. That's going to be 40 minus 40x plus 4x squared equals 20. So on the left-hand side, I've got 5x squared, I've got minus 40x, I've got plus 100, minus 20 from both sides, gives me plus 80 equals 0. Divide everything by 5. So now all I've got to do is to solve this quadratic equation. I can factorise it. It's x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 0, so there's only one solution. x is 4. OK, well, if x is 4, I know that y... Is 10 minus 2x, which is 10 minus 8, so I know that y is 2. So my solution is x is 4, y is 2. Mr. Wright here. I hope you found those questions and work solutions useful. If you did, this is one film of several in the series, so you're sure to find more practice if you want it. 
In the meantime, if you found the film useful, please hit like. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll respond. And if you'd like more of the same, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next film.